I've made a couple of videos already on making mistakes. I made another one. I had to, because honestly now it's usually no tragedy to make mistakes. Hi, my name's Alex. I've argued enough for a lifetime. In this series of videos, I zoom in on the perspective science can give you. I'll show you the playlist at the end, because nature's complex. Science isn't. Don't get me wrong. There can be tragedy in being wrong. There very often is. But we live in a time when wars are ignored and the neighbor's cat meowing too loudly isn't. Yet when it comes to my science communication, there is no tragedy. I even went ahead and told you in one of the channel trailers, the link is below, I need the space in the overlay cards for other stuff, that I may be wrong at times in terms of the facts I dish out. In addition, if you go to the comment section of my to date most often viewed video on YouTube, for example, you'll find somebody telling me that I was giving out wrong information, quote unquote. Come on, I'm better than that, right? Better than not making mistakes? Who do you think I am? Some sort of, well, I don't really know what wouldn't make mistakes, to be honest. Even machines fail sometimes. Perhaps a particular mistake was too egregious and that caused a reaction. There are certainly mistakes like that, and if they do spoil my videos for you, then I'm sorry about that. Here's the thing though, these are little things, no matter what you may think in the context of the content, as it were, and we have to make sure we don't get caught up in these little things all the time. Otherwise, we'll never stop arguing. I mean, do you know what's coming our way? Stuff like this. Apart from wars, climate change and all the other really big stuff, there's also deep fakes, metaverses and other forms of AI applications. Just take one rather unobtrusive and frankly fun example. Have you seen Henry VIII smiling his toothpaste commercial smile? If not, I got the link for you in the description. As if he still had his own teeth when the picture the AI is using was painted. What is that then? Is that a mistake or dangerous or anything in between? I mean, do you make a mistake when you let yourself suspend your disbelief, quote unquote, at this animation? Suspending one's disbelief is a known concept with respect to, say, Hollywood movies, for example, or for that matter, storytelling in general. It's complicated, isn't it? Because you don't need much imagination to see where deepfakes could and probably will go. You won't suspend anything. It's so real. When is it no longer your fault to not know? And most of all, what is it that you really need to know about all of this? We'll start with Clark's third law. It states that every sufficiently advanced technology, note the word, is indistinguishable from magic. Think about that for a second. Do you know how your smartphone actually works and why it enables you to communicate with me or somebody else on the other side of the world? It's all magic. Without having spent your life on it, it's almost impossible to understand, is what I'm saying. Yet there are things you can and should know about how modern communication works. I'm not going to repeat what I said in the video that popped up in the overlay cards just now, but this is where I don't make mistakes. In the concept of science, the concept of research, and thus technology. I mean, have you ever met an exhausted scientist or engineer or teacher telling you that looking stuff up on Google isn't the same as doing research, quote unquote? It isn't, but it's also not worth nothing, quote unquote. It's looking stuff up, quote unquote. Nothing more, but also nothing less. Realizing this is the first step. Don't tell me that that's difficult. Other stuff is, but not that. It's the thing with the barber. Just know what you don't know. In this case, know that you look stuff up, but don't do research. The next step is then the perspective. You've read the Wikipedia article, or if you've listened to me, you've even gone and read in some of the references under the Wikipedia article. Now you know, right? You know what you've read. That's it. Let me take you back to school for a second. As a kid there, you learn about different countries. Bavaria is in Germany, for example. In fact, you may get the impression that Bavaria is Germany. Then you meet somebody who tells you he's from Germany and being the kid you are, you shout out something like, Ooh, I love Lederhosen. 
Mm. I'm from Germany. Could you hear me groan? Even as I say this myself, having written it myself, I groan. See, Bavaria is the one part of Germany which hasn't really accepted the very concept of Germany 100%. The Prussians, Frisians, Alemanni, Franks, hell, even the Saxons all will answer, I'm from Germany, when you ask them. The Bavarians? Before you say anything, I know how jumbled in time and space that list of ethnicities is. Don't worry, it doesn't matter. It's a collection of words. And to be fair, most Bavarians will identify as Germans too. But there's still a significant portion of people there who will tell you that they're from Bavaria. I'm one of the Alemanni, if you must know. But that's beside the point. If the kid grows up in Europe, she may know about Germany being a manifold of people. She will also know about the Bavarian stereotype of sauerkraut, sausage, beer and lederhosen. If she's old enough, she will know the concept of insulting other people and perhaps even care about it too. What's missing is the ability to couple those two pieces of knowledge together and go, hmm, something ain't right here. Perhaps I shouldn't shout lederhosen and bratwurst at the top of my lungs while standing on a fishing boat in the North Sea. See, what's important is something I know as transfer knowledge. How do you apply what you've read to your situation? Think of the example above. Do you know what I mean? Transfer knowledge is tricky in science. Knowing everything you need to know for your research is close to impossible. People knew and know that too. It's part of why the academic process has become what it is, a gauntlet, as I've called it in the other piece. What's easier than to tell someone else, hey, you've forgotten something? If that isn't an entirely positive vibe, then you'd be right. Read up on Newton and his interactions with the scientists around him and focus on the human aspect of it. Without the small-minded, jealous colleagues of his, indeed without his own jealousies, there may very well be no mechanics, or perhaps not even optics. Who knows? The fact is that it helped that there were animosities. Now, granted, that's not usually how it works, at least not today and not in what was my field, mesosphere physics. Yet again, here we are. We need to find ways to make sure that we collect knowledge and examine it together. If there need be small-minded quarrels to uncover all information that there is about a subject, then so be it. As I said in a piece on science and empathy, we know how to work around human shortcomings. There are many ways to do that, too. And that's where we bring it back to the start. So, yes, of course, I make factual mistakes. I link to others who know the facts better, too. But does that change the perspective just because I don't get everything right about space-time or mobile phones, for example? No, it's the perspective we have to be right about. We can always educate each other about facts. No, the ones who shall not be named don't count for this now. They're too few and their motivation is almost never connected to the shape of the earth. Facts hit you in the face. Perspectives don't. We have to understand them thoroughly. In fact, as it were. I use my own communication to learn. I know that you'll tell me when I'm wrong. And I want you to. If you combine it with something of value for me to learn about, give me evidence of what you think is true and make me understand that evidence as valuable. That's more work than it sounds like, and most commenters probably won't go that route. But once in a while someone does, and when that happens, it's worth it for all involved. And we simply have to sometimes take the time to be thorough. Otherwise, we won't be able to judge anything. And we're going right back to a high priest telling us what that star constellation means. Or a pharaoh taking credit for the sun coming up every day.